Good morning, good morning, good morning. I hope we are live. I hope you can hear me. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and uh, what else do I hope? I hope that we're going to have a great show. So good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. Before we begin, first of all, I'd like to say good morning to my spirit guide, Grey Eagle, who as always is to my right side here. I'd like to say good morning to Chris. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Rosemary. How are you today? Uh, I'm good today. I keep yawning, but um, I'm not, I don't think I'm really tired. I think it's, I don't know what it is. I think it's maybe the heat or something getting to me here. I'm going to yawn again. Oh. So you mustn't talk about being tired because you know what it's like when you talk about being tired or you talk about yawning and all the rest of it. I remember when my daughter was a little girl and I used to sing her, there's a, a wonderful song. Um, I'm trying to think where it's from. It's from an old, 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 old movie about Tom Thumb. It's a Disney movie and it's about Tom Thumb. And Tom Thumb uh, uh, was, of course, magical. And all of his toys would come out at night time and play with him. Uh, and um, it was, it just was a wonderful, wonderful movie. But one of the toys that he, that he had was a, a, a roly poly. I don't know if you know what a roly poly is. It's sort of like a pointed thing with a round ball on the bottom. And the, there's the hat and the face. It's like a, a roly poly big round man. Anyway, called, they, we used to call them roly polies. Uh, but the roly poly toy that Tom Thumb had was a yawning man, and he would sing the song to put all of the toys and, of course, to put Tom Thumb to sleep. And you know, if you start to talk about yawning or if you happen to yawn, it's extremely contagious, isn't it? And that's how I used to get my darling girl to sleep at night time. There you are. See, little, little tiny. Pieces of information come out when we start to sort of think back and our memory uh, sort of kicks in. We start to think of all those things that we probably had forgotten. So, Chris, do we have anybody here? People are beginning to log in, Rosemary. Um, Annika's here from Connecticut. And I think Annika told us in the past that she was one of the uh, first people to sign up for your live event on August 27th in Connecticut. Oh, yes. Well, I'm really looking forward to meeting you. And, uh, yes, let's just mention that while, while we're waiting for people to come on, of course, we are. Um, can you believe what, what day did you say it was, Chris, the 28th of July? How on earth did we get there? And uh, that's a bit scary, isn't it? Uh, we're we're almost at the end of July. Summer is halfway through, folks. Make the most of it. Make the most of everything that you can, you know, you can think to do in the summertime because winter will be upon us before we know it. Of course, we're in Florida, so when we talk about winter in Florida, we smile because that's when, you know, the 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 big heat goes away. It's warm. It's cool. It's wonderful breezes you walk on the beach it's amazing uh yes we we here love the winter time but you know when you get snow and rain and you know and you can't go out and the kids can't go out it sort of gets a bit uh gets a, a bit rough for all of us doesn't it because don't we i think i think you know it in years ago i'm going to sound like a very old lady now Years and years ago, when I was a young girl, uh, we made the most of you. We were never bored, you, and you would never say that you were bored either. Uh, you were never bored because um, you just found things to do. We used to um, play with marbles, and I don't know if any of you know what marbles are, but they're the, those sort of round glass things. That you can get the tiny ones, you can get the big what we would call the, the you know, the big uh, chockers. Uh, and we would uh, make a, a chockey. You've got to be, you've got to be British. You've got to live where I live to understand what a chockey is. But you dig a hole in the ground with your fingers, a little hole in the ground, and then you'd sort of flick your marbles in. And, and we'd all the kids would play together and you'd win some marbles and you'd lose some marbles. But when we were inside, when we were indoors, of course, we couldn't, couldn't dig out a chockey 
so what we used to do was we used to get the fireside rug and we would sort of push it up a little bit and make a little tunnel in the rug and we would use that as our chockey. We'd lay on the floor for hours and hours and hours playing marbles or we would play with uh, snobs. Uh, now, a lot of people think that snobs are the same as jacks, but they are not. We didn't have jacks, we had snobs, which were sort of square, chalky things. If anyone can remember what it is I'm talking about, we used to sort of throw these, there were five of them, we'd throw them up in the air and catch them on the back of our hand. Then we'd throw them up and try to catch them in our hand. We had all sorts of games for for snobs. And uh, if we didn't have any snobs, uh, we'd get some small stones from the garden and use those. It was a bit hard to sort of land them on the back of your hand, but we, we used to do that. We were never as kids. I can never, ever remember being bored or hanging around being bored. And when I think about kids now, you know, they've got computers, they've got books. I'm thinking about my darling boy, Reese. Uh, books galore, uh, computers, uh, TV, movies. Um, but kids today always seem to want to be given something to do. They rarely play on their own for hours and hours. Although Reese, when I think about it, once he's got his trains out, if he plays with his trains, he can spend hours and hours by himself with his trains. But I, I do feel that kids do feel that they should be entertained. Um, and I hear kids say, oh, I'm bored. I'm really, really bored. And if we had ever, ever said that when we were kids, we'd have had a mop in one hand, shoved into one hand, a duster in the other, and we'd have been told, well, get some cleaning done then. Even as little as sort of eight to ten years old, we had to clean house. We were never, ever bored. <laughs> anyway, uh, Chris, what about you? Were you ever bored when you were a kid? No, but, you know, when we were growing up, we didn't have, let's call it the fear or concern that parents have today with children being taken. So we would ride our bikes through the neighborhood. We would ride our bucket bikes downtown. Uh, we would walk through the power lines. Um, we would sail bathtubs on huge puddles that, you know, after a rainstorm, we would go seashell collecting. Um, we would build forts. Uh, gosh, we would just get into everything. Yes, but, you know, kids can still do that today because, you know, they can do it with their parents or they can do it with their older brothers and sisters. They can be, you know, shown where they can do things that are safe to do. Anyway, I do feel that, uh, and I think that we adults are the same. You know, what do we do? We sit down, we reach for an iPad or we've got plugs earplugs in our phones and we're on our phone all the time and dialing this and, and doing that and playing with this game and just you know sort of it's all electronics and um i was talking to we're doing um we're doing a a series of uh, workshops for the i think it's the infinity group uh, that are based out of um, out of uh, chicago i think um and um uh teaching people and, and of course when we do our when we do the um when we when we when i go to connecticut and we do our workshop in connecticut we're going to be talking about connecting with the spirit world connecting with our soul connecting with that energy that light that is within us and so many people don't know how to do that because they're so busy looking outward or trying to find information on the computer they're trying to find information on the web they're trying to find information by you know i don't say it but all you've got to do is say hey you know what a l e x a uh she'll give you all the information you like we're so busy looking for information that comes from outside of us and it's so easy to get it we don't even have to think uh about you know, about what anything might mean we don't even have to think about you know our math problems if we're at school i mean i know that lots of students cheat and ask for the answers to their difficult questions and 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 uh, i can see why they would do that and uh, i think it's a great thing as long as you retain the information it's a great great source of information but 
when we're talking spiritually, we're talking about sort of learning things spiritually. The information that we're seeking, the knowledge that we're seeking, comes what from within us. And if we're not used to listening to to our senses, to our feelings, to our inner knowing, if we're not used to trying to hear the heartbeat of our soul, when I when I talk about listening to the heartbeat of your soul, you can see people look look at me as if, if what and the, the, what and the heart and the soul has a heartbeat. What's the, what what's that? Uh, people just never think to listen to what is going on within them because they're so busy looking out for all that information going out, 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 and and truthfully, so much of the information that you that is going to be valuable, truly valuable to you, is what comes from within, and we're going to be talking about that certainly uh, when we go to Connecticut, and certainly when we do our other workshops this year, we're going to be talking about that. And, you know, so many, so many people think I'm, you know, that I'm anti-technological stuff. I mean, I'm not because it's brilliant. It's great in its place, in an appropriate way. And I don't think an appropriate way is all day, every day, with an earplug in your ear, listening to something that's going on that's beyond you. Um, we need to listen to our soul. We need to nurture our soul. We need to feed our soul. That's what we need to do. Okay, Chris, who's there? Oh, we have people from all over the world here, Rosemary. But, you know, can I just tag on to what you just said? Because I had two thoughts come to mind. One from your lessons where when people are connecting with the heartbeat of the soul, you always talk about that fine line between imagination and what is real. And if people do not connect to their soul, how will they even know what's real? And then the second point is, uh, you were talking about children and play. Obviously, they're using their imagination as, you know, the propellant to get whatever it is they want. They're play acting in a play. They're building cities, whatever. If you think of a person like Elon Musk, who imagined a day of going out into space or imagined saving the world by um, inventing electric cars, he didn't have his face in books to entertain he had his face in books to stimulate his imagination so those are the two things i think about when you talk about this okay let's hear what other people have to say shall we let's have some comments and questions from our chat room carolyn says we are constantly distracting ourselves and it's no wonder being quiet is an uncomfortable feeling yes Oh, I so agree. A lot of people are talking about the types of um, activities they did as kids. So Lorraine is saying, back to playing and not being bored. We were sent outdoors for most of the day and for lunch and dinner. Street games, hide and seek, red light, green light, one, two, three, roller skating. Roller skating. Came in with came Skipping in with red words. cheeks yes. and then my sister and i had to pull weeds and help mom clean and do the dishes and the laundry like little cinderellas that's right there was, there was never time there was never time to be bored i mean we we would uh, you know every saturday morning we would all be given whatever a dustpan and brush or, uh you know a, a, i mean every every saturday when i was a teenager i had to literally wash the walls and the ceiling of my kitchen, and I mean wash, soapy water, and sponge getting up on the ladder, and uh, yeah, I know that Cinderella feeling too, but we weren't bored, were we? Chris, keep going. Mikey says, I loved playing outside with my friends growing up. We played so many different games, swam, raced our bikes, water balloon fights, things kids today will never have the joy of just being a kid. Well, you know, we're hoping that uh, just talking about this inspires some of you. You know, I'm going to be going to New York in a in a couple of weeks and uh, I should be with the, uh, my grandson and we'll be doing lots of things 
uh, you know, hopscotch. Uh, you know, I'm going to see if I can get some chalk and let's play hopscotch on the pavement. I don't think he's ever played hopscotch. But I could be wrong, but, uh, you know, we that, uh, actually thinking about it, I did do a hopscotch in the, in the garden so we could maybe do it in the garden. And uh, that was a lot of that was a lot of fun doing that. Uh, we had skipping ropes and we had uh, roller skates and, um, you know, I, the, well, of course, the, I think I've mentioned this before. There were four of us girls. Uh, my two brothers were much older and had left home by the time we was we were growing up. But um, so there were four of us girls. There were three bikes and there were three pairs of roller skates. My mother liked conflict. She liked to cause conflict. The three bikes and the three pairs of roller skates belong to my sisters. Uh, and if ever there was a, a time when they weren't using them, uh, I could uh, I could I could use them. Um, not the bikes, but certainly the, the roller skates. The bikes were not mine, and they were not mine to use either. Uh, but uh, you, there are lots of other things that you can do. Whip and top was one of my favorite things to do I don't know if everybody knows what whip and top is but we used to love whip and top walking and going up and down the street for hours and hours and hours and you'd put make chalk patterns on your top so that when the top spun around that the, the all the chalk patterns would make a pretty pattern it was it was great never ever bored ever Annika says as a young child my siblings and I used to spend hours and hours drawing at the dining room table. We had a whole stack of paper and a big box of colored pencils, and I always read books too. Well, we used to we used to play board games. We had um, I don't think there was I can't remember coloring pencils or paper or anything like that, but we did have uh, snakes and ladders. We I'm sure we must have had Cluedo. Uh, we had um, probably when we got older, we had Monopoly, but we we had board games and uh, and or, or we played cards. We had a packet of playing cards and we would play we would play cards and we would make up games as we went along with those things as well. And as I say, we would play snobs and we would play oh gosh, all sorts. We would play marbles, play all sorts of things. Uh, even when it was pouring with rain, you were, and 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 of course, this will tell you how so very old I am. We did not have uh, all day TV. We only had, you know, it was sort of TV came on. I think at uh, something like five o'clock, and uh, went off at ten o'clock. After the ten o'clock news, that was it. Did the program ended? So we didn't, you know, we didn't have. We certainly didn't have computers or anything like that. We didn't. You know, the games that we played were the games we also used to play. Did you ever play, uh, what do you call it, sticks? And my mother had a ton of knitting needles that she kept in a sort of a round, tall round thing. And uh, we would, uh, you know, we would play at picking up sticks with knitting needles. So you, when you're a kid, you can be very innovative. Uh, Rhonda says, oh, how I remember playing in the gutters, <laughs> rushing with rainwater. Great memory. <laughs> yeah, rain. Yeah. <laughs> rainwater, going down the drains, little kids sitting in the drains. You didn't think about it then, did you? Nobody thought Nobody thought to say, do you realize that that, that water's filled with um, garbage and germs and so on now it's everybody's using hand wash and so on and so forth you know we can use far too much sanitary stuff what happens when we use far too much sanitary stuff is that um, our body does not then is not able to build an immunity to all of these uh, germs and, and things that we that we, we get around us now we don't have the immunity to fight it off so you know while ever you're thinking about sanitizing and i know some people are bit neurotic about it or maybe they just think that they're being very 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 careful uh which of course you know it's, it's their property but just think about it because you want to build you want and you want your kids to build an immune system there's nothing wrong with eating a good old lump of soil from the garden from time to time and eating worms was a pastime that samantha used to quite like can i tell you chris you're kidding, right? 
no. <laughs> you know, she's little, 18 months or so, two years old, and she'd see a little wriggly thing and she'd get looked at it like that and she'd taste it. Yeah, very tasty. Yeah. Oh, dear of Lord. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Monica says, I was born and raised in the Netherlands. When I was in elementary school, we would play with marbles, too, like you. In Dutch, they are called knickers. Oh, really? Oh, that's so interesting. You know, when I talk about snobs, I've not nobody knows what snobs are. Somewhere in my bedroom, I have a, a little thing of my, my sister made them for me. I don't quite know how she made them for me now, but she made them for me and Maybe the next time uh, we do a show, I'll find them out and I'll show you what, what they look like. Um, and um, people used to say, oh, you mean jacks? Well, jacks are those sort of metal things. Uh, and no, I don't mean jacks. I mean snobs. So maybe one day I'll show you or I'll show all of you. Not only will I show you the snobs, I might show you how to play snobs. Yes, Chris. Dean's on and he's asking... Who does Grey Eagle go to for advice? Well, his answer comes right back at you. Dean, good morning. Um, the universe and all of those. Oh. Oh. And all of those s small doors that open. I'm going to give this to you. In his words, let me get it right. To the universe and all of those small doors that open to those who are inquisitive. Yeah. There you go. I know what he means, but I'm actually going to follow it up with him as well because that's interesting. All of those small doors in the universe that open to the inquisitive. Um, in other words, when you ask, then, you know, when you ask the question, you're ready for the answer, I think. You've got to just find the, you've just got to find the right question. When you ask the question, you're ready for the answer. Yes, that's what he means. But all of those small doors in the universe that are, are, have, that hold uh, so much information for us. Didn't expect that, did you, Dean? I hope you liked the answer. Chris. Mary is saying, gun control is a sensitive subject. My husband believes we need them. It hurts me to have one. Is it important to own a gun these days? You're asking the wrong person. Um, I think that everybody has to make up their own mind about that. Um, I think that, you know, violence begets violence. It, in, in a way, I think that, um, you know, when the police carry guns, then the criminals carry guns. If the police carry bigger guns, then the criminals want to get bigger guns. So it, it's hard to say if, if, if that's right or not. But in this day and age, it, it's also hard to think about going out into the streets and not having some sort of protection uh, for, you, for yourself or for your kids. Um, I know that in, uh, I'm just thinking of um, the pepper sprays and things like that. And in some states, this is, is so ridiculous. In some states, pepper sprays are illegal, but guns are not. So you figure that one out. Um, but, um, you know, ladies, if you can't get pepper spray and it's illegal to have pepper spray, a good, really cheap, cheap, strong, strong perfume will just do exactly the same thing as long as you aim it right for the eyes it'll do do this do the trick the same way it's very hard to um to think about you know how we should protect ourselves i know that in england the police do not carry guns um i think that we have less violence or we have less gun violence certainly um because i think criminals don't feel that you know, if the police don't have guns, they feel generally they feel they don't need guns either, although there is gun violence. I know it's it's hard. It's very hard. 
I do think what I do think is that the rules should be really, really strengthened. I think that um, you know you don't even have to have a license to buy a gun. All you have to do is go on Google, and it'll tell you exactly how to make one. Uh, it'll tell you the exact things that you need. It'll tell you how to make a, as many different kinds of weapons as you can. So even young kids have that information at their fingertips, which is why it's so important that parents should absolutely have parental control over whatever your kids are using. We know the consequences when that doesn't happen. And, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's very tough. It's a very tough question. I personally... Uh, do not own a gun, but I know, you know, I have friends who do, and they have very good reasons for it. Uh, you know, I like to think that I can protect myself in other ways, but hey, what do I know? Chris. Barbara says, good morning. I still live in the same house I shared with my husband for 30 years. Oh, nice. He, Is he that good? Died in he died in 2020. It's filled with memories and I feel close to him, but it's a large home on 10 acres. I am often lonely and overwhelmed by the upkeep. Does Dawn think I should move? What advice does the spirit world have for me? Well, even before you asked the question, I was already getting the answer because uh, Barbara, I know we 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 all of us we we hold on to memories, but the, the the memories that you have in the house, the memories that you can see and touch now, are memories that are close and and you hold those memories in your heart. You don't need a build a building or a place to retain those memories, and you will not lose your husband or any little part of him by moving. Um, Gray. I've got someone standing talking in my ear here. Um, give me one second here. We don't usually do this, but there we are. I'm going to do it anyway. Um, uh, so I'm told, are you ready? Are you ready? I'm told the land is way too much for you. It's far too much for you to handle. Uh, piecing it out or parceling it out is not going to help because you still have the the responsibility. Um, I'm being told, and I'm, I, and I also don't usually do this, but I think I'm pretty pretty sure this is your husband talking to me here. Don't be afraid of moving. You won't lose me, he says. Don't be afraid to move. And when the time is right, I think you should start clearing out now, packing up now, sorting things out now. Because I think that you, you know, you have a life to live yet. Grey Eagle has his hand on my shoulder and I'm told to tell you, you have a life to live yet. And I know that although it's sad that you've lost your husband and it's a devastating thing, you still have a life to live. So don't be afraid to change, uh, to have a new beginnings. Your husband will stay with you wherever it is you decide to go. I hope that helps you. And he loves you, by the way. Yes. All right. Chris. Judith says, today is my nephew's birthday on the other side of life. Happy birthday, David. Well, uh, how nice. Well, let us all wish David a happy birthday. And here we go again. And I have a young man who's looking at me. Very sparkly eyes, very twinkly eyes. This, he, I, I wish I had more time to do this. This is very brief. Uh, he's talking about his head or something, something with his head. I need way more time to do this. But blowing lots and lots and lots of kisses to all of you, to all of the family, lots and lots of kisses. But uh, he's got the most beautiful, happy, smiling face. I hope I've not confused you there, but anyway, there you go. Uh, you can respond. You can tell. You can let us know if uh, if um, what if you think I'm crazy, Chris. 
Marlo says, as a kid, I play a lot on my piano. My neighbors loved it and came to hear me. Now my neighbors are irritated because they want to hear the television. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, yes, well, um, yes, well, you know, uh, I have had a, a quite a big part in in helping Reese because Reese is a piano player also. And um, he's unfortunate. They live in an apartment building in New York. Uh, it's on the ground floor. So we know that everybody's going to hear. I mean, you know, it's, it's what can I tell you? Uh, so unfortunately, he is only allowed to play uh, the piano. He's only allowed to play the piano for, you know, for I think it's 45 minutes to an hour. He does his practice. Then he's not allowed to, he can't play as he feels like it. And I know what you're talking about because I play the piano, used to play the piano too. And uh, sometimes you just feel the need to just go and sit down and play the piano. When I go to New York and there is the piano that I've provided for my grandson, I have to be very aware of the time of day that it is and not to start too early, not to play too late, and not to play too long either because, you know, uh, listening to the piano is wonderful. But when you practice, you know, when you're practicing, you pra sometimes you might practice, you know, five or six bars over and over and over again until you get it just right. And that's got to be grating on the ears, hasn't it? Yes, the television wins every time over the piano. Chris? Rhonda says, I always hear the saying, quote, live in the moment. I realized when driving home from work in a rush to get home, thinking of all I needed to get done for the day and the next week, that I'm not living in the moment. No. I need to stop and focus on the moment. That is my new task. Right. That's great. Now, you can't do it all of the time, but I think we should have times in our day or in every day where we just you know just live in live where you are in that moment in time appreciate look around you feel the moment and and you know sort of just just uh live in that it, it might be a joyful moment it might be a sad moment it might be a just an enjoyable moment it, you know Living in the moment is very important instead of sort of having your head filled with, you know, the tasks you have to do for today, the next day, and so on. You know the next day might never come, don't you? So living in the moment is very important for all of us, I think. Eric wants to know, when you look at colors of energy, do you, quote, see with all of your senses? Do the different colors have sounds or fragrances or feel different? or sound different all of the above <laughs> eric yes all of the above sometimes i see uh with my eyes with my normal vision sometimes i see beyond my normal vision sometimes i see wider sometimes you know you know the rainbow song listen with your eyes so sometimes when you're looking and if you're looking beyond your normal vision or using that extraordinary vision that takes you beyond the normal vision, sometimes you, you, your, your other senses kick in. So you feel, you sense, you're aware, you, you hear, you can hear vibration or you can feel vibration as it's running through your, through your body and uh, color and Color is pure energy. Every every color is pure energy. So when you're looking at colors, you're looking at that pure energy, and each color has its own vibrational level. So, you know, so you're not only seeing and hearing, but you're feeling. You can literally feel the tremors. You can feel those vibrations running through you and uh, creating incredible music. Actually, I hope that that's either going to help you or confuse you. Chris. Vicky's asking, is it possible to see a message from a loved one in a sequence of numbers, like in a license plate that adds up to a birth date of a past loved one? 
Absolutely. or a lottery ticket that I can detect an important date. Absolutely. I mean, you know, uh, what did Gregor say earlier? I have to remember the universe has many small doors. And when you ask the question, you receive the answer. Those doors open when you ask the question. And the universe is amazing. And, mean, it, you know, we can be... We can be led down an alleyway in a town that we've never been to before, in a city that we've never been to before, or even a country that we've never been to before. And if you follow and you just follow where your senses are telling you to go, you can be led to the most extraordinary things. I remember I was uh, with a, a, a good friend of mine and um, we were in Holland and uh, we were we were walking down the street and we'd been told that there that there was a, a place that we really, really wanted to go visit. It was actually a diamond factory. And so we were looking for this diamond factory and um, and and we got completely lost. Uh, Holland is filled with sort of narrow little streets. It's a wonderful place to visit, but it's filled, when you sort of come out of the tourist areas, lots of narrow streets. And um, so I basically followed my nose which is basically listening to Craig Eagle who says turn left here turn right there and so on but you as you're doing it you can you feel it as well you feel the vibration you don't quite know where you're going but you're you're trusting you're asking the question where do I go now and one of those doors of the universe opens and shows you the way and um as we're walking down this particular street, I remember looking very specifically down on the ground in one of the buildings. Uh, and they had these uh, sort of very tall three, four story uh, buildings that uh, had basements. And, and there were people who lived in the basements or had offices in the basements. They had basement windows that you could look out and look up onto the street. And <coughs> we went by this particular uh, house and there was a there was a weed growing and uh, you know when I think about it I'm thinking about the Native Americans and the fact that they do not have a word for weed because for them there's no such thing but there was this little weed growing and I remember looking at it specifically not really knowing quite why I was looking at it but as we walked past it uh, a few minutes went by and um, a lady came out of the house where the weed was growing she came out of the house and uh, started shouting at us and running down the street towards us, shouting at us. And I'm thinking, what's going on? And it happened to be an ex-girlfriend of my friend who had just happened to look up out of the window in the basement of this building, just ha so happened to look up and out uh, of the window and s saw him uh, and... Um, sort of came racing out she probably couldn't believe her eyes and they she, she ran to him gave him big hugs and so on and so forth and invited us back we went in uh, and had coffee and again another door opens and the universe has many of those little doors and it happened that her boss knew a person who owned a diamond factory that was very close to where we were so the universe has many doors and uh, all you have to do is to find the right question and the door will open and give you the answer. Chris. So following up on, on those, um, from that answer from Great Eagle, there were a number of comments. Lorraine said, if you knock, doors will be opened to you. Yes, but you've got to knock. No, you know, no point sitting there. You know, it's a really, really rather like somebody sits at home and they're so really lonely and they get so upset and if only they had a friend and if only they could do this, if only they could do that and so on and so forth. And, and at some point you have to say to this person, yes, but when did you last get off of your bottom and go out and go and join a group, go to a theatre, go to... And I know it's difficult when you're on your own. Trust me, I know it's difficult. Um you know, it's, I've been in that same situation. Um, but um, you have to, you have to look, you have to get up and you have to find life. It won't come knocking on your door 
you've got to get up and look for it and to find it. Jeff said, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Hi, Jeff. Yes, you're so right. I was talking about you yesterday. Were your ears burning? <laughs> I was talking about the flooring. <laughs> anyway, keep going, Chris. Judith says, when you ask, ask believing. Yes, or yes, you know, or hoping at least. Yes. Let's see. Mark is saying, Gray Eagle, can you give me heavenly advice about an opportunity in 2024, 2025 to make a move to Oaxa, Mexico? No, I, no. I'd love to help you out, Mark, but no. What do you think I am? Fortune teller here? Just kidding. We could, he, Gray Eagle, I'm sure could, but not today. Uh, take far too long chris <coughs> marlo said last week i think my grandpa was with me oh, nice. i felt him and if i ask there is a sign i love all of my grandparents in heaven what is the reason that you feel one of them more than the others uh, is she asking me no, I think... I think saying, in general, why I, would one I, feel I think, yeah, someone more than it, another? It might be that they are a very compatible energy to you. We, we, we're we going back to soul signs when we talk about this, so it could be that the, they're very compatible energy. It could be that they're, that you are somehow together on at the same vibrational level because everything is energy, and we all have to look at that vibration vibration that's going on there so it could be that you're on that same or similar vibrational level uh there are lots of reasons it could simply be that you're his darling and since you were born he just loved loved you loved you loved you and has that a special place in his heart or vice versa it, it a number of things a number of reasons all right lorraine says what do our loved ones in the spirit world think of these times we are living between war, disease, harsh climate, global warming changes, floods, fires. Okay, so stop, stop. Okay. All of that negativity. What does Grey Eagle think? Before you said all of that other stuff, what does Grey Eagle think of our world? He feels joyful. Pain, hurt, hardship our gifts to us when will we learn when will we understand when we when will we accept that these are gifts to us we've come to this earth to learn to grow to discover we've come to this earth to live uh, we've come to this earth to experience in our human form every emotion that is possible for us to 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 have we didn't come here because it's nirvana we didn't come here because it's a paradise we came here to learn and to grow. And I know that we don't like it. Why would we like the pain? Why would we like the tears? Why would we like the heartache? But in amongst it all, could we please remember so much joy? When I talk to my grandson, in those moments when I talk to him, I'm not thinking about the tsunami. I'm not thinking about the wars. I'm not thinking about anything other than Living in the moment with my boy. And it's joyful. And I'm blessed. And I feel very grateful for that. So you can list all of the things that are wrong with the world. But if you're going to do that, by all means do that. But if you're going to do it, if you insist on doing it, could we list all of the good and the wonderful things that are right with this world also? Because there are so many more things that are right with this world. Last night, I went out, uh, I took my neighbors and my friends for dinner. And we went into a restaurant and we, we had a great dinner, fabulous dinner. And um, uh, I took them because my neighbors have really been, I've had the best neighbors and they've been marvelous to me. They've been wonderful to me. So I, I took them out with the purpose of 
giving something back, even though it might only be spaghetti or something. Uh, but we sat there, the five of us, and we had a blast. Uh, my neighbors are Polish. They had so many stories to tell. And it's so funny because they've been my neighbors for a long, long time. And uh, Janina said to me, I have to tell you, I'm reading your book. And I said, which one is that? And she said, The Eagle and the Rose. And I said, great. She, well, she just started it yesterday. She's known me for all of these years. And for some reason or another, she just started reading uh, my book. So I'm really looking forward to it. So she started with that and uh, had some questions about that. And then, uh, you know, everyone had something to say. And everybody was having uh, good food. We had a great waiter, Will, the waiter. And um, we had a joyful, joyful time. We had a really joyful time. Um, we were not thinking, of course, somebody started in with politics, but that was in, in its own way a sort of a fun thing anyway. But we did have to ease out of it because, you know, uh, what's, you know, we, I mean, look, anywhere you go, you can find something to, to be disappointed about, you can find something to complain about, you can find something to moan about. Anywhere you go, you can find all of the awful stuff. And there's a lot of awful stuff. But we're here to learn and we're here to grow. This is what this world of ours is all about. You know, mountains that collapse, uh, uh, volcanoes that, uh, that uh, you know, go crazy. I mean, this is our world. We chose to be here. We learn from it. We grow from it. We grow from the pain that we have. But can we also see the beauty and the joy that surrounds us, that is, you know, out there, everywhere you go? Wonderful people, really beautiful people, people who will help, people who will, you know, are thoughtful and caring and, um, you know, and sit and have dinner with some good people, why don't you? And, and think about the good stuff. That's all I'm going to say because I feel as if now I'm really getting on the bandwagon. I do understand people worrying about the state of the world. They've been worrying about the state of the world for centuries. Centuries. And bad things happen. And it does seem, and especially because we have the internet, we have that information. It seems to us that bad things are happening all the time. But I know that at some point today, something very special and very wonderful is going to happen to me. I'm going to get a phone call. I've already had one from my daughter. I'm going to get another one, at least another one or two, maybe all three from my grandson or from my daughter who wants to know what do I do with these sausages and how do I cook them. And she, that was what I had yesterday. Find the joy as well, please. Find the joy. Otherwise, you know, what's the point of being here? Live in the moment. Chris? So Judith responded back um, to your comment about her nephew, David. She said, Rosemary, thank you. What a gift you just gave me on my nephew's birthday. <laughs> yes, David had a fun laugh and twinkling eyes. Yes, I know why he was pointing to his head. Bless you, Rosemary. Thank you. Well, my darling, I have to tell you that it had nothing to do with me. When you've got someone standing in front of you saying, I'm here, can you just give a message? I guess you just you, you have to do it, right? And um, believe you me, that was his birthday present to himself that he was able to say hello to you all and to let you all know that he's safe and that he's well. So I think that's fabulous, right? Okay, Chris, keep going. And then Barbara responded to your um, answer saying, thank you so much to you and Gray Eagle. You confirmed what I have been feeling in my heart. You are such a comfort to me. All right, now be patient then. Just, you know, make sure you do it in the right way. But doesn't this give you something incredible and hopeful and joyful to look forward to? You know, it's it's sad leaving things behind, but it's also hopeful and joyful to move forward and see what the future holds for you. 
you know and and if you do that with an open mind and an open heart and if you're willing to embrace the future as hard as it will be for you to do so if you're willing to embrace the future and to and to explore what there is out there for you i'm absolutely certain that you're going to find happiness and joy Judith Wait. says, I have heard of this earth experience as a classroom. Your thoughts? Absolutely. I mean, you know, when we, when, before, prior to our coming here, uh, we're given choices and, um, you know, lots of choices. And one of those choices is, you know, how about having a go at this? Uh, we We might say, well, you know, I need to learn about this, or we might say I need to learn more compassion, or I need to learn have more understanding of what pain feels like or what it feels like to be more joyful or so whatever the lesson is, whatever your soul needs is the reason why you why we do this. We we come to this earth and we and we have this journey. It is a journey. It is a soul's journey. Pierre Tilhard Desjardins has a quote, great quote, we are spiritual beings having a human experience, he said. I would like to add to that, I always add to that, we are spiritual beings having a human experience and hopefully in a spiritual way. Uh, because if we're having this human experience, but we, if we don't include our spiritual senses and our spiritual awareness, if we don't include that, then we get bogged down by all of the awfulness of life. Um, if we look to, to understand why we're here, and we're here to learn and to grow, and how many times we've talked about, you know, the little old lady who, who once said to my students, if I could give you a gift for Christmas, I would give you tears, I would give you heartache, and I would give you pain. Because it is through these things that you will learn and grow. And it is so true. And those tears and that pain and that heartache, they are momentary. They don't last for a lifetime. They are momentary. And once we pass into that next world, we take with us uh, a, a much more compassionate nature. We take with us a much more knowledgeable and understanding uh, idea of what pain might mean, not just to us, but to others. It makes us more empathetic. If, if we've never suffered, what does Grey Eagle say to me? If I were to, if I were to smooth your path and leave no wrinkles, where would your learning process be? We all have to have wrinkles. We all have to have those lumps and bumps. We all have to have those mountains to climb and those rivers to cross. And uh, so often when we're crossing those rivers, we are filling those rivers with our tears, uh, with our sadness. But as we cross the river and we get to the other side, we realize that throughout all the anguish and the heartache, I crossed the river. Look, I'm much stronger than I thought I was. I'm much more empathetic than I thought I was. I'm much more aware of my own soul and I'm much more aware of those around me. Chris, how are we doing for time? I think we're pretty, aren't we almost up here? Yeah, we got about seven more minutes. Um, uh, can I just, hold, hold on a second. Can I just then mention again for those of you who might have missed it at the beginning, we are, yes, uh, we're coming to the end of July, which means that we're now moving into, in the next few days, we're moving into August. And I will be in Connecticut on August the 27th. I'm so looking forward to it. I'm so excited. Uh, and um, if you want to know more about the information as to how you can come and spend the morning with me, Yes, 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 with me, and I'm going to show you how, if hopefully, to raise how to. Sorry, I'm moving around here. How to raise your level of consciousness. I'm going to show you how to become more aware, more sensitive, and fingers crossed. Pretty sure we're going to be having messages from the spirit world. We're going to be receiving lots of messages from the spirit world. 
during the course of the morning. So I'm looking forward to that. The 27th of August, everybody. And if you want to know more about it or more about any of the upcoming stuff that we're doing, please uh, go to my website, rosemaryaltea.com, R-O-S-E-M-A-R-Y-A-L-T-E-A.com. See? Easy. Chris. All right. So um, today is Cheryl's birthday. Happy and she birthday. was hoping. Thank you, Cheryl. Happy birthday to you, my darling. Happy birthday, my sweetie. Happy birthday to you. And what did you want for your birthday today? She was wondering if there is anyone in the spiritual world with a message for her. You perfectly well know that there is. And that's all I'm saying. And they're sending lots of love and kisses. You know me well. I know you well. We're good to go, right? Lots of love from them to you. Okay, keep going, Chris. All right. Uh, Lorraine says, thank you for the attitude adjustment. <laughs> oh, gosh. Did I give you an attitude adjustment? Oh, was that when I went off on all of the... Yes, I'm afraid I do go off sometimes, don't I? Mm, yes, well, you're very, very welcome, my darling. Did any of you see the snake? Did the, yes, yes, I killed a snake. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be right for me not to mention it. But for all of you lovely people out there who watched the little video of me beating the snake to death, oh, you didn't see that part, but I did, and I chopped its head off as well. I'm going to be very honest and upfront about it. If it's a choice between killing a snake and uh, having a, a cat uh, bitten, badly bitten by a snake, which I'm going to choose, I'm afraid the snake had to go. It just did. You know, you have to protect what is yours to protect. So I was protecting our little moonlight. Um, and... Uh, because Moonlight was intent on going after the snake, and the snake would have definitely had Moonlight before you know what's going on. So uh, as much as I do appreciate all of you who think that we should save every single animal in the world, um, uh, we should do our very best to trap them and so on. There was no way I could do it. Um, I'm not an I'm, I'm not an animal person with a big net, you know, and a, and a, and a Thing, protective clothing um, you know if I see something that is potentially dangerous I'm going to deal with it but I'm going to deal with it then and there but I'm also going to send it send it on its way with a little prayer you know um, something like that anyway Grey Eagle actually would you like to know what said? so you see the uh, the Native Americans of course the food the snakes were you know, very tasty eating. They made very, they made very made made very good stews and things, <coughs> or whatever they made with them. <laughs> and as I was um, ending the snake, certainly his life in this world. As I was ending the snake, Gray Eagle suggested to me that I might like to cook it because they can be very tasty. And he was laughing at me because I was turning my nose up and thinking, no, I. Don't think so. Uh, I've given you all something to think about now, haven't I? Okay, Chris, keep going. <laughs> so now we have comments about the snake. <laughs> Lorraine says she did see it and did you killed it, but you just answer that. Rhonda's like, oh, laugh out loud, icky snake. Um, Lorraine says, oh my, I heard Chris yelling, you're barefooted. <laughs> Uh, Sandra says, that snake, yikes, I would have grabbed my cat and ran. Uh, Lorraine says, you did great, you were brave. <laughs> and Carolyn says, you are a true warrior. It is, I have to be honest with you, it's about the third or fourth snake that I have killed. I like to say with my bare hands, but not, not really, usually using garden tools. Uh, but I don't like killing creatures and if I could save every creature of course I would uh, 
I had a bat once that sort of was sitting in my bathtub. How it got there, I've no idea. This is when I was in Vermont. And the uproar of people who were so appalled because I managed to catch it, put it in a towel, but it was very, very sick. And I have dogs, and there's no way that I'm going to keep that sick, very, very sick bat and put it outside in the garden where my dogs could find it, I'm afraid. So it went in the garbage. I know, I'm a horrible person. And, uh, oh, boy, did I have a lot of people say to me how what an awful thing that you did. But the bat was really, really sick and dying. So I made sure that it got a good burial. Anyway, I have to protect my own. What can I say? Chris. Uh, <laughs> Andrew is asking... <laughs> Do you have any seasoning suggestions for cooking snake? Uh, oh, Andrew, uh, let me think about that. Garlic, definitely. I'm not sure. You know, in in uh, in England, we eat eels, and I know in lots of countries they eat eels. We we get we we have a. You know, they used to sell them in the in the streets of of London and probably other cities as well. They used to sell jellied eels. They would, uh, you know, they would uh, cook them and put them in aspic. And then they would cut them into pieces and they'd sell them on the street. And you'd hear, you'd hear the vendors shouting, jellied eels, jellied eels, you know, sort of thing. And people would go and get a bag of jellied eels. People loved them. Cockles and mussels, cockles and mussels. I mean, good, good. I love cockles and I love mussels. So, especially mussels, I really like mussels. But anyway, we used to eat all of that stuff. So garlic would be really good, a really good choice. Andrew, if you ever cook one, maybe you could let us know how you did. But certainly lots of garlic would be my, and a little salt, of course. Chris. All right, we're right at time. Okay, is there anything else going on there? No, we're good. Okay, well, all right, on that note, on a not at all a spiritual note, right? I think I'm going to remind you of what Craig said then. What was it he said? The universe has many doors, many small doors. Just think about this. The universe has many small doors. When you ask the question, they will open. I find that very intriguing. I'm going to go more into detail with that with him on that uh, later on. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, and if I hear anything exciting or thrilling, I'll let you know. Thank you for joining us, everybody. We've had a lovely time this morning. Look, we've had no problems with the internet. We, we look at this. Uh, you can see that I'm sitting in a different place. I'm in my bedroom at the moment. Uh, but um, there we are, uh, and um, I don't mind telling you that I'm in my bedroom. Uh, and um, yes, I think that we shall be back on Saturday. I'm trying to think of what day is it today. We'll be back on Saturday morning with our story time. Uh, I think is it this week, Chris, that we're having um, a, a, a bottle breaker. Yes, on Friday, Friday at five p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So this coming Friday, which is tomorrow, we have another volunteer. I don't know, can't tell you her name, can't tell you anything about, I think it's a lady, can't tell you anything about who she is or what she wants because I haven't been in touch with her. Chris deals with all of it. So I will be talking to this bottom bricker, totally cold, not knowing anything at all. If you want to see me do that live, you can tune in to this same channel that you're in 5 p.m eastern sound of time that's 10 p.m british time um and um <coughs> we'll we'll see what happens then but i'll be definitely back on saturday morning with our story time and um uh i should have told the snake story shouldn't i anyway i'll figure out a story to tell you all i'm sure you'll enjoy and of course you'll have another chance to to uh, to answer questions uh, or to ask questions, which I shall endeavour to answer. Sorry, I'm getting it all muddled up. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody for joining me. Thanks. To
to Chris. She does a great job. And a special thanks, of course, to Ray Eagle, who is has his hand on my shoulder even as I'm talking to all. And he's chuckling about the snake and uh, the, the tasty snake. Uh, and um, until I see you all again, please, everybody, have a very, very blessed rest of the day. And have a very blessed weekend, everybody. Bye-bye.